All right, this is going to be really complicated because I've got a lot of things going on. I've got the camera recording on its own thing. I've got the microphone recording on its own thing. And then I've got the screen recording recording on its own thing. So I'm going to try to sync them all together here. One, two, three. What's going on, everybody? My name is Tyler. Today I'm going to be kind of doing something a little bit different than normal. If you saw my last video, I got the Rode Wireless Go 2 system, which is a fancy little wireless microphone kit that Rode has just come out with to sort of upgrade the previous version. This one has two transmitters instead of just one. So you and a friend, if you have those, can talk together wirelessly. Fantastic. So today I'm just gonna kind of walk you through the Rode Central app, which is the application that goes and allows you to do some of the features on the Rode Wireless Go 2 that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So without further ado, let's do that. So you can get the Rode app, the Rode Central app from their website. So I actually have it, I actually have it pulled up here. So if you just go to the Rode Wireless Go 2 page, and I'll, I'll link it below, but I just figured I'd show you. Um, yes, we love cookies. So basically, you just scroll down here, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, great, cool, awesome stuff, stuff, stuff. And then down here at the bottom where it says downloads, you will see the Rode Central Mac and Rode Central for Windows. Now, I'm on a Mac, like I said, so I obviously have it downloaded for Mac. But if you have it for Windows, the steps should be pretty similar. But if you have any troubles, uh, please leave a comment and I will be sure to answer and make sure you're good to go. Uh, I've already got it downloaded, so I'm not going to walk you guys through that. I figure you guys know how to do that already. So, so as soon as you pull it up, it's very simple, very basic. It's just going to pop up and say, please connect a road device to get started. So what you're going to do is take your little included USB-A to USB-C cable that came with your Rode Wireless Go 2. Uh, you don't have to use an A to C, you can use a C to C if you'd like, uh, as long as it plugs into your computer and as long as it plugs into the Rode Wireless Go 2, you should be fine. And I will say, I've already updated mine um, and I was looking for a way to downgrade the firmware back to the original so that I could show you guys exactly what it looks like. But I'm gonna do my best to kind of describe it. Thankfully, it is pretty straightforward. It's nothing super complicated. Uh, but anyway, so you're gonna take it and then you're just gonna plug, plug it in and then you'll see a little icon pop up on the screen to let you know that it's plugged in. There's your battery indicator. And as soon as you plug it in, uh, if you see on my screen here, you'll see that it has popped up in the Rode Central app. Now, if you had an update, if this is the first time you're doing this, you'll most likely, you most definitely should get a pop-up that says, hey, you have an update, update me. If I remember correctly, you get a pop-up, it's like update, you click the big update button, it does, you know, it does a little bar thingy, and then it says you're, you're updated. And I don't think it lets you do anything unless you update it, and you're definitely going to want to update it because Rode actually managed to squeeze out almost double the compressed audio recording space inside the transmitters. So you're definitely gonna wanna update your transmitters and of course the receiver in order to get that functionality. So once you've got it updated, my version is 1.3.3. At the top, you'll see some of your main controls here. Now remember, this is for the receiver. Um, so this is gonna allow you to control certain things like the backlight, whether it's on or off. You can control the gain mode. So there's gonna be coarse and fine. Coarse is going to be like your basics, so low, medium, and high. Uh, high being very sensitive, low being not so sensitive. Uh, and then you can go switch it to fine and then this lets you fine tune exactly how many, you know, how much of, I, I believe it's a pad, correct me if I'm wrong, how much of a pad you'd like to have. I have mine set to minus 24, which just so happens to work for me. So you have your modes here, uh, whether you do merged or split. Uh, and if you remember my last video, split basically allows you to take two transmitters and put them on two different channels, uh, whereas merged is going to take, um, however, whether you have both transmitters attached or neither, or one of them rather, it's going to merge it into one track. And then obviously you have your safety channel over here, which is really cool. And what the safety channel allows you to do is basically it'll record uh, a secondary channel uh, while you're recording that if for some reason the original one gets messed up, the safety channel is kind of the backup. Uh, but that option is only available in the merged mode, so keep that in mind. And then of course your backlight, you can set what the road button does, mine is set to the backlight. You can also set it to a marker. Uh, and the marker, if I'm not mistaken, allows you to basically create a mark within your recording so you can see uh, once you put it in the Road Central app, 
where you sort of flag different things. Below that, you're gonna see your battery indicator. Mine's at 99%, your clock, uh, and then you can hit the sync button here. And when you do that, it'll just sync it to your system clock in your system. And then of course, again, your firmware and your hardware. So that pretty much covers it for the receiver. It does, it will charge while it is plugged into your PC, although it's not showing you in the app, uh, it is charging. So there you go. So you can plug these into your PC and charge them up if you would like. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in one of the receivers or transmitters now. So you go ahead and plug that in. And like I was saying, the see how the light's flashing? That's to let you know that it is charging. And as you can see on the Road Central app, it has now popped up and is notated with a TX for the transmitter. So once you click on it, it'll do this little bar thing. And again, same deal. If it has an update, it'll pop up and say, hey, like update me. Make sure you do that. Now it's not gonna show anything in here because I don't have any recordings recorded, but I will show you if you click this little golden cog here or gear cog, is it weird to say that? It'll give you the settings for this transmitter. Now keep in mind, this is for this transmitter. If you wanna edit the other transmitter, you have to plug in that transmitter and adjust those settings. So it might be worthwhile to mark your transmitters with maybe like a silver Sharpie or something, like number one, number two, in case you have uh, certain settings that you want just for this transmitter. So if you're doing a one person microphone setup, maybe you want the safety channel, maybe you want those different things enabled, uh, you're going to want to make sure you grab the right module that's set up for that. So another little tip there. So in here, you've got two buttons. You've got record on and off, and then you've got mute lock. Now, like I was saying before, you can record internally on the transmitters with this system, which is really fantastic. And that's what that update really, uh, sh is where that update really shines because it gives you almost 40 hours of compressed audio. Now I have mine set to uncompressed, but we'll get there in a second. So if you want to enable internal recording, this is really important. You want, you need to obviously plug it in, update it, and then you go here and then you hit record on. But here's the thing. There is no button on this to dictate when or when you're not recording. So anytime you turn on the receiver, right? And have it all kind of, and you connect that transmitter, it's gonna start recording automatically. So just keep that in mind, especially if you have the broadcast quality recording setting, because as you can see uh, on the uncompressed audio, you're only gonna get about seven-ish hours. Um, whereas the uncompressed, or the compressed rather, I always get those confused you get the 43 plus. And then the mute lock button, basically what that does is it just prevents the microphone from being able to be muted. And then kind of the same thing down here is your clock, same deal, you can hit refresh and it'll sync it to your system clock, uh, your firmware, same thing, 1.3.3. But yeah, that pretty much covers all the things in the Road Central app. The other transmitter would be the exact same thing, so I'm not going to plug that one in because I'm out of USB ports. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and I will record internally to show you guys. So it automatically starts recording. This is this is transmitter number two. So you can see it's moving right there. I'm talking, I am in merged mode. So it is just recording right off the bat. I don't know if you can see the little red dot there, but there is no way to for me to stop that. It's basically just going to record for as long as it is turned on. And as soon as I turn it off, it will stop recording. You're actually listening to the recording from the microphone on the Rode Wireless Go 2, just so again, I can kind of show you what that sounds like. Now this is with the uncompressed uh, setting, so I don't know entirely the quality difference, but I imagine it's probably not night and day unless you really are diving deep into the nitty gritty of things. But for general use, uh, I'm never gonna record more than seven hours at a time. So I'm just gonna leave mine to the broadcast. Once I turn off this transmitter, it should stop recording. And there you go. So I'll plug the transmitter back in. It's going to load things up here and we should see our recording, hopefully. And now we wait. There is an error mounting mass storage. That's not good. So maybe we'll unplug and we'll try it again. There we go. So worst case scenario, if that does happen, um, as you can see, this is the first time I've done it and it popped up and it was like, hey, trouble ma mounting mass storage. Don't panic, uh, just unplug it, give it a second, try it again uh, and it should be fine. And now you can see here is, here we go. So now once the transmitter's on, you'll get your two lights and this one just happens to be number two 
Um, so, so there you go. So now you can scrub through your audio clip here. Fantastic. And if you want to export it, you can hit export, change the name. You can change what kind, WAV, MP3. I'm gonna keep it as a WAV, 48 kilohertz, fine. So this is kind of an interesting thing. Um, I don't know if you can actually record 32-bit float on these microphones. And for those of you that don't know, 32-bit float basically is like a, <clears throat> to my understanding, kind of an infinite range. So no matter how loud you scream, no matter how sharp of a sound might come through the microphone, it never clips. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll hit export and it's gonna ask me where I wanna put it and we'll just do that and export in progress. Export is complete, we hit close and now you can see it on my desktop over here. here we go. So now once the transmitter's on, you'll get your two lights and... So there you go, in conclusion, if you set the transmitters to record, they will record as soon as you connect them to the receiver and they will not stop until either they run out of space or you turn them off. So there's no way to stop recording halfway through if you need to do that. So maybe that again is where the marker comes into play. All right, so that's gonna pretty much cover the Rode Central app, uh, but let me know in the comments below if, if there's any questions you have or any, any issues that you've run into using the Rode Central app. And I'll try my best to help you guys out, whether Windows or Mac, I use both, so just let me know. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe. Very much appreciate it. I plan to do hopefully more videos like this, some more tutorial based stuff. I know I've been kind of avoiding it for the past while, but if you guys like these tutorial things, let me know and I'll continue to do them. So that's it. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.